Good morning. It's great to catch up with you. So Good morning. You know, I had a couple of questions and really is sort of how's your work and world been affected by COVID? You know, not limited travel, I guess. So how, how have you survived? Well, I mean, yeah, a lot of work uh, outside of the country is not, not happening at the moment. Uh, but I mean, there's still a lot of work in South Africa and, and close by like Namibia, where I work a lot, specifically on the unsealed roads or gravel roads. So yeah, no, I mean, life is treating me well. In, in fact, it's changed. Uh, so that we have so many more meetings with our traveling and that's also a benefit yep i certainly remember your work on them on the unsealed sort of management strategies and blading frequencies and the sort of work is that still happening or you're finding or what's happening in that space well ab absolutely i mean it's going on and a couple of very interesting projects one that i've just finished and that's um, a calibration of the hdm4 performance models uh, on the unsealed roads for the Western Cape province, which is a, a very, very, very interesting outcomes um, to, to say that, you know, the, the models are not necessarily wrong in terms of, let's say, gravel loss, but the way in which the, the um, uh, practitioners actually maintain the road, it makes that after three years on, on half, more than half of the, um, the 72 sites we had an increase in gravel thickness. And that is just in the way that it's maintained of blading up um, the, the uh, material from, uh, lost from the side. Now, of course, you lose a bit of fines in that process, but um, you know, it, it made such a wonderful difference in terms of the performance um, and, and the, of, of gravel roads, particularly in the Western Cape. So that's one very interesting project that we've just um, completed. And it changed the whole thing of programming and what you need to do. In, in fact, instead of regraveling the whole road, you can just go and drop material next to the road, which is called then maintenance material. So, I mean, a, a different way of thinking. The other major project in, in Namibia is working out maintenance strategies to optimize maintenance strategies. And, you know, uh, lessons learned and from, from my visits to New Zealand as well. I mean, so many like reclaiming material from the side, um, reworking and inline crushing on the road surface itself. Um, you know, even things like tire dragging, um, where, where are the limits for that? Um, going back to even uh, like what's uh, referred to by our opets as, as intermediate maintenance, with the tractor toad graders. Um, and it, it makes a big difference in an area where you have people that have to start learning how to work a grader as a grader operate, because it goes a lot slower and, and so forth. So, and then of course, there's a, a huge movement towards uh, uh, nano modified emulsions and incorporating that. And we've had a project last year and just using dune sands, the Namibia or Namib dune sands, with excellent results if you can mix it in properly. So I mean, there's a, there's a huge drive still. And then of course, you're taking it a little bit of a step further in terms of upgrading low volume gravel roads to surface standard at about 25% the cost of a, a normal upgrade. So a lot of good things happening. Um, very enthusiastic about that. Has there been any reversion of, of sealed to unsealed? Is that sort of pressure of rehabilitation money? Well, I mean, there's, a, there's always that perception that there's a big um, gap between unsealed roads and sealed roads. And to a large extent, I think it's, it's because of not proper maintaining the unsealed roads. I mean, you can, and we've proven that apart from the exogenous benefits of surfacing a road, but we have maintained unsealed roads at 500 vehicles per day cheaper for the agency than to actually go and surface it. But of course, there are many other benefits um, that one must bring into, a, um, an, into account. I've got a desire and interest to try and share knowledge. So basically, I'm very interested in some sort of format or some sort of regular catch up or, or things like this with key, key people in the industry like yourself. Would you be interested in partaking of, of that if, we, if it's possible to arrange? Because I think time slots can be found. 
Well, ab absolutely. I mean, I, I think, you know, I've learned so, so much from so many people around the world. And, and even from youngsters, you know, as I mentioned to you at the start of, you know, um, learned a couple of things that nobody's wrong with experience. If you've experienced something in a particular environment um, with your materials, your climate, your rainfall, and so on, and, and you've made something work, then our job is actually to put that puzzle together of what works in what type of situations. And I mean, that's where it's so valuable to learn from each other. Well, thank you very much for your time. It's great to catch up and I hope to do it again soon.